Hey everyone, Wannabot here, and welcome to the Moonwatch. I, I guess I'm going to say it's kind of a preview. It's not really a demo since it's not publicly available yet. However, Moonwatch is a bullet heaven made by the Backpack Hero developer where time only moves when you move, which is... It's an interesting twist. I'm curious to see how it goes. Uh, but it was just announced, I think, like an hour, hour and a half ago, give or take. Uh, maybe two hours ago. And so if you do want to check it out, uh, and add it to your Steam wish list. Follow the link in the description below. I think there should be a demo available at some point. Uh, I'm going to bet during the next fest, but I'm not entirely sure. So we have two characters, though we can't play as one of them. We're just going to be playing as a nun with a shotgun. We'll see how this goes. I think it's actually more of like a stake launcher shotgun kind of deal. Uh, let's see. But yeah, so we've got vampires and stuff. Now, let's see. Cards and deck. Discard. That's my health. This is how much energy I have. I think this is the wave progress, and this is... Wait, no. That's the wave progress. I don't know what this is. Okay, so we've got a couple of things here. So we've got Stake Launcher automatically fires stakes. Passive lasts for four and a half seconds. Stake Volley fires stakes in aimed direction. Garlic pushes enemies away. Stake Launcher, Garlic again. And we also have some more Stake Volleys and Stake Launchers. I'm not actually sure which of these is good. Can I equip both of these? Okay, so... Th they might shoot simultaneously. So you can also add something. Hmm. So memory chip, next card played costs zero energy. That's actually really good. Poison rain is interesting. Poison potions fall around the player. That's around the player. And then we have zombie bait. Oddly enough, I think I'm gonna go for the zombie bait. Being able to control these enemies seems like a really good idea. Oh, that's experience up there. Okay, add a card to the deck. Fires, an or fires orbiting meteors, which apply burn to enemies. Lightning Rod that strikes nearby enemies or all burning enemies explode. But that's a detonator. Enemies have to be on fire first. We don't have any fire. We have the meteors. That only lasts three seconds. Yeah, I don't want to add too much to the deck because we're going to have... Uh, we're going to get spammed to hell and back again. I'm going to try the meteors. Because I'm curious. Okay, the meteors are kind of fun because I can effectively play Bumper Zombie. I just have to be very careful that I don't do too much. Okay, we're out. I'm going to do a stake volley, hit those guys. Toss a grenade. I'm just going to go for the make things free option. Okay, next card played costs zero energy. Let's go for that, avoid the entrance, and we're good. Okay, so after every fight, we also gain a passive. So stake weapons fire an additional stake, that's very good. Whenever you use a card, holy lightning strikes an enemy, or all tossables have increased area. That's tough. I like the idea of trigger finger if I want to go for a stake build, considering I already have a bunch of stake weapons that might actually be amazing. Holy Light works really well with a bunch of cheap cards, and Gunpowder works really well with throwables, but I only have one. I might actually go for Trigger Finger, though we're going to have to redo some things. Okay, so this also means I'm going to have to be uh, much more selective about what I specifically add to my deck, or even if I want to add anything to my deck to begin with. Let's see. Kill a bunch of them. Keep a garlic. Oops. That didn't work. Took some damage there. Uh, let's see. Let's just skip those. Free card. Stake launcher. And we're good. We took a little bit of damage, but I think I heal. Energy capacity up by one. Stake, launch, stake weapons fire an additional stake. I'm just going to keep stacking that, I guess. And we can do a removal. Okay. I think we're going to get rid of the meteors, after all. So our goal should be to find anything and everything related to stakes. Actually... Really, I think what we might want is a whole bunch of the shotguns. I also got to be kind of patient here. 
I'm actually netting a whole bunch of kills, which is great. Okay, I'm actually going to keep the zombie just because it's going to make my life much easier. I don't really have anything to fear here. There we go. Move faster when standing on flames. Lightning strikes have a chance to freeze. Frozen enemies may explode into icy shards. I'm going to go for the lightning strikes. That does not help me at all, which is kind of a downer, but it's fine. And yeah, it looks like I heal just a smidge from one region to the next. Let's keep using the shotgun whenever we can. Turret that automatically fires at enemies, but we don't know if it stakes. Kinetic bullets, double stake damage. Big. I would love to be able to make these stakes last longer. Because if I could actually, or not the stakes, the stake launchers. Okay, grab another one of these. Guess I'm just gonna garlic. Barely get touched, which means I should have plenty of health. Shoot him. Shoot him. Garlic. Got it. Yeah, because it's time based, it's kind of weird. Gain energy faster when standing still. Press Z to stand still. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, I see. I can just hold it. There we go. Take a free shot. More shotguns. Dash. Nope. Don't want any of these. Some movement tech actually wouldn't be bad, in retrospect. Let's see, and I can garlic them away if I want to. Though I think I might want to get rid of the garlic. Maybe. Yeah, luckily a lot of them are getting stuck. Which is exceed exceedingly helpful. Garlic them away. How much time do I have left? Not too much. If I have to garlic again, I think I'm going to have to garlic again. The bait is lightly tempting. Okay, we're not going to get more energy here, but it's fine. That worked out. Increases stake penetration. There is also Holy Light. Holy Light would work with Freezing Lightning, but I think we want Whittling Knife. Because I don't think we have any stake penetration. Defense. Oh, defend the probe. You know, this actually works out. Okay working reasonably well. I think the one problem is very expensive using a whole freaking crossbow just on a group like that is what it is. I think I'm, I might actually get rid of the crossbows just so I can stack as many stake launches as I can because it's clear I can use multiple simultaneously. Uh... I'm just going to go for the energy capacity. Alright, let's remove a card. I'm going to get rid of one garlic. We only need it as a backup. Okay. Another stake launcher. Kinetic bullets. And yeah, I'll probably get rid of one of the stake volleys as well. Stakes may inflict burn. Last for seven seconds. Okay, that's worth it. I'll have to see if there's any passives that specifically boost. Oh yeah, I've got I've got three stake launchers. We definitely need to get rid of one of them. Defeated enemies may create splinters, absolutely. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any more removals, so we're kind of just swinging it at this point. I'll wait until they get a bit closer.
Okay, those splinters are great. Get the fire stakes too. Get a bunch of these. Yeah, I guess me living in a corner is probably a really good idea. Garlic them back. Bullets. Yeah, I'm hoping to get the discount book maybe a little bit more often. It's the thing that makes the steak volley actually a little bit more practical. Okay, that's fine. Steak weapons, fire an additional steak. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going for that. Yeah. So let's, let's just hang out here. Oops. Not quite at the corner. We want to give these guys a little bit of a run up. I'll just go for the free stake launcher. If I had one last crossbow, I'd be able to cycle everything that I need. And still be able to keep the crossbow around if I need it. That we are solidly getting into bullet heaven territories here. Just in terms of... Let's see. Additional stakes or more splinters. I think I'm going to go for the splinters just because infinite cascade death is always the ideal in these games. Let's just go over here. Okay, send that off. Go for that. Go free. Get another just stake launcher, I think. Okay. I could go for another memory chip, but I, I literally don't need it. I already have one. My main issue is that my maximum hand size is currently five. I wish I could actually increase that in a meaningful fashion. Because if I could increase it even just by one, the small amount of deck bloat that we do have wouldn't hold me back that bad. Yeah, I'm just going to cycle passives and just stand. I like this. It's... Uh, I was playing, well, I guess, let's see, gain energy even faster while standing still. Oh, I didn't even conceive of the idea that there could actually be, I could get stack that one. It makes total sense that I can. Okay, so that means I'm probably going to be swimming in energy. So I can actually just use literally everything. Uh, let's see. Don't want any of these. Yeah, so actually some energy could back. Oh my god, look at that energy just come back. <laughs> this is not okay. And by that I mean it's very okay. I was actually... I, I had some initial concerns about this game. I knew Backpack Hero... I mean, Backpack, Backpack Hero is great. We all know that. There's no question on whether or not that game is going to, uh, that kind of pedigree would carry through into this one. But you know, I was, I'm always a little bit worried. Some bullet heavens are just like, hey, but what if we made vampire survivors again? And that's intensely boring because vampire survivors exists. And why do I want to play more va vampire survivors when I have vampire survivors? Uh, and I recognize that a lot of people will just say this just in general in regards to all bullet heavens. But for me, it's much more like it has to be... Let's see, fire slams the leave trail of fire, but that's a full flamethrower. No, we don't want any of those. Let's see. For me, I like all of these weird changes. Uh, poison enemies have a chance to create locusts. That actually could be really cool. However, just more trigger finger. And boss. I wonder if there's another act after this one. Hack the terminal. Is there a way I can quickly play cards? I have no idea. Okay, so I have to I have to move occasionally.
Okay, I'm just gonna get a zombie over there. We'll go for that instead. I think I should only move once I have my full combo together. Unfortunately, the boss is shooting at me, so I should probably move also when the boss is done shooting at me. Or, sorry, I should also move when the boss has taken a pot shot at me, so I'm not hit by it. Was that it? Was that the run? Okay. So, new run can be played at any time. Chronomancer starting deck dashes. Hordes last longer, reduced experience. Okay, hard. New card, SD card, draw new hand. Stake shotgun, stakes in current direction of movement. What if you're standing still? Stopwatch, slows time. So, we also have a bunch of upgrades for fire cards played, garlics played, and times died. All right. I was hoping we'd have another act or two. Just, even just kind of a looping system. Oh, this game does not like being clicked on. I noticed it resets back down to that resolution and windowed mode every once in a while. I usually don't play games this early, but I will make an exception for, uh, I'll make an exception for developers that I like. So what do we want to do? I mean, for games, developers that I like? I mean, yeah, that is true. I absolutely will make, uh, Exceptions for them. Hordes last longer, enemies move faster. Sure, let's give this a shot. I'm probably gonna die. Like, this is gonna be one of those that goes badly. Oh, I was really hoping I could actually change my loadout more. Garlic is actually more effective than I thought it was going to be. Okay, poison, meteors. Let's just go for that fire build. Uh, let's see. Explosive that causes poison. There is a potential poison build out there, but let's let's go for burn since I was handed burn on a platter. All burning enemies explode. Sure. Okay. I think I'm hosed. Yeah. One problem I'm going to have with this. Uh, I Maybe, do we just enter the feedback zone? Is that where I'm going to stand? So one immediate problem I'm having with this is, well, I guess we're doing meteors again. Uh, I love the mechanics. I think that's really cool. Move quickly to a space, leaving behind a trail of fire or flames that leave a trail of fire. I think I'm going to go for Fire Dash. This is immediately a little bit better. Uh, I want this game to have a... I want this game to have... All oh, those fires actually last a while. Comet bounces off walls, freezes enemies. We do have a stake shotgun, which is interesting, but no thank you. There we go. Uh, a draft mode, or even just kind of a, a starting build or two, or just the ability to remove a lot of these things from my deck much faster. Move faster when standing on flames is tempting. I think I'm gonna go for Holy Light just because. I'd like to go for the fire build, but yeah, looking at this, we only have the ability to remove two cards the entire run for the first act. Maybe that isn't so bad, at this point. Let's see, slows time. I think I already added a detonator, yeah? I guess let's grab memory chip. Right? Not that it does a whole lot of damage. Get another one of those. Interesting, does garlic not do a lightning? Maybe it doesn't. Okay, we survived that, barely. 
Lightning strikes have a chance to freeze or move faster when standing on flames. I just don't have enough. Okay, so let's remove. Fix this. Remove one of these. Yeah, I do have three of them. I would like to be able to remove more of my starting cards quickly. Especially since a number of these items are, like, extremely thematic. In terms of, like, hey, this is, this is clearly the fire the fire run and fire build. I'm gonna just grab another memory chip. Okay, at least we're getting a decent amount of med kits here. Garlic again. Garlic again. All right. Yeah, we're taking some damage. It's not great. Ah, <sighs> defeated enemies may create create splinters. Yeah, we just we need cascade death. Hmm. Fire is not as good as I was hoping it would be. I'm gonna own that right now. Blast those guys. Yeah, the discount ship is kind of huge here. Fire stakes in a line. Another fire dash? Unfortunately, fire dash is kind of expensive. For Especially for the amount of damage that it does. And maybe that's it, is just that the stake launcher build is just extraordinarily high damage value. Okay, that super didn't work. Now I'm gonna just do another splinter. Unfortunately, we need more fire-focused things. I'm probably cooked here. You never know. Oh yeah, we're dead. Ah, I need to play three more garlics and 14 more fire. It's fine. We'll just keep playing until we unlock more. I might also want to just drop out of hard mode. I don't... I don't think I'm actually prepped for that. We unlocked it, but I think it was mostly through an exceptionally strong build. Why does it keep doing this? It's fine. Like, literally none of you will see these issues. Uh, okay. So, right. Feedback zone, kind of, sort of. I'm gonna keep trying to go back to it, and I'm gonna keep getting stuck. So, big one is uh, I really wish there were more ways to mess with cards uh, positively. Right, we need to use exactly three garlics here. Okay, stakes may burn. I mean, yeah. I guess I'll I guess I'll do a mixed stake fire build. Uh orbiting meteors. Which, like, I like the orbiting meteors. They're good. If I could specifically boost them in some way, shape, or form, that'd be lovely. Molotov Cocktail is actually going to be incredibly nice. Kick him back. Not as big as I was expecting it to be, but that's fine. Energy Capacity, Stakes Bounce Off the Walls. That's actually quite good, but let's go for the Energy Capacity. Uh, da, 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 da. But yeah, I'd love to be able to upgrade cards as kind of like a rare reward. Uh, well, actually, I mean, that would be an interesting one. What if... You had less stake volleys in your deck. Uh, but what if it was one of those where if you get X amount of stake volleys, they actually fuse and you can specifically let's grab the detonator. Uh, if they were to fuse and you could actually like um problem is there aren't enough burning enemies. 
for the detonator to be, like, super worth it, at least in my current situation. I mean, maybe with the Molotov cocktail. Uh, da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Fusing cards, there we go. Sorry. I usually do not record early in the morning, but I've been... I got my 5G updated yesterday, and I've been kind of out of it. Stake penetration. Move faster when standing on flames is nice if flames stuck around. So I think we're just going to grab a whittling knife. I, there's no way I can escape the amount of stakes that I'm chucking around. So the best thing I can do is just accept them. Which is unfortunate. That's almost kind of what you don't want in this game. Uh, I would actually say easiest bit of feedback I could give. Get rid of all of the starting cards. Literally have none of them. Um... Don't, don't give players a starting deck. Just have players have a basic starting weapon. Nothing more. Uh, so, like, have the stake launcher be an automatic thing. Uh, or, actually, just have every character start with a card or a weapon or something basic like that. Flamethrower. So it's effectively a fire shotgun. I like it. Uh... But start them off with something intensely basic, uh, so that they can build their own deck. Because right now I've got one hell of an albatross sitting on, uh, hanging from my neck, which is specifically... I'm stuck to a, a stake build and I have no way around that. Maybe I will unlock more characters, specifically by, by getting achievements. Um, in fact, I'm 99% certain that is the case. Grab that. Let's just go for that. Uh, but at least currently, the... I don't want to say the end is not in sight. Garlic again. There's no way for me to avoid them exactly. Actually, let's put this away. Molotov cocktail is probably going to be a bit better in this situation. Followed by meteor. Followed by detonator. That's what I was hoping for. Explosive grenade? No. That's just an explosive grenade. I'm not currently firing stakes, so that was actually kind of moot, wasn't it? Yeah, flamethrower is pretty good. And, like, the fire build is great. I love that. <sighs> Unfortunately, it doesn't have the stopping power, so there's no point in getting the tripod. I mean, I guess I could. Oops. That was not it. Uh, but I would I would still say having like a much smaller starting deck that doesn't have it, quite as many things just gumming it up. In Vampire Survivors, every character starts with exactly one weapon. And so you kind of know exactly what you're going to get. Let's let them burn for a bit. Detonate them. We'll just save up for the flamethrower in this mix instead. Once they get a bit denser. Okay, snag these. I'd love to go for a turret build. I can see that actually being a lot of fun. Maybe. I guess I'll grab bipod. What else am I going to do? And especially because we've got a Defend the Probe mission going on right now. And, like, actually, in retrospect, two bipods, even if I'm not... ...going for the same, like, super stake build as last time... ...probably still worth it. Okay. Avoid a couple of these. Unfortunately, yeah, fire doesn't last long enough. Nor did my enemies last long enough. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to make sure I get another bipod if it shows back up again. I think I'm just going to accept that as, like, a complete necessity. 
don't even know how much HP the robot still has. I don't. All tossables have increased area. Stakes bounce health walls. Let's just go gunpowder. I know there's one that makes uh, explosives actually explode, but I don't know. I guess we've kind of pared the deck down a little bit. I think the main one is one less stake launcher and maybe one less garlic would be the best possible thing I could ask for. Just in terms of like, yeah, that's, you know, two stake launchers, two, uh, two stake launchers. Actually, yeah, one less stake launcher, one less stake volley, one less garlic. Because then you could feasibly remove them over the course of a run. And even then, I think this character is specifically supposed to be. the stake launcher character as opposed to like a fire character. Okay, let's just snag a couple of those. I'll just pop the detonator now. Retrospect, probably overkill. Probably meteors. No reason for me to cards as hard as I have been. Burning chance of an uh, burning enemies have a chance of exploding. Perfect. Uh oh. Game ended just as I chucked. Okay, there we go. Chucked a Molotov, or was planning on chucking a Molotov, and it kind of broke it a little bit. Luckily, not an issue. What's the one thing I can do actually with the Molotov cocktail is chuck it on myself. Another meteor. Unfortunately, the meteor doesn't exactly help if an enemy is directly on top of me. But I think it's fine. And yeah, that burning enemies have a chance to explode. Massive. Okay, we've got garlic in a moment. I'm gonna take some damage here. Whoop. We need that second tripod. Okay, we're good. Didn't take too much. Second bipod. Yeah, there's just too many enemies. I, being able to upgrade cards would be the other uh, big thing. I was kind of talking about that earlier, but like, I'd love to be able to combine things. So for example, if you start with two stake follies, you can either remove them both, or you can find a third one. They mush down together into a better stake folly. And maybe you get a choice of a couple of options, or maybe you can even like sacrifice another card in your deck as like extra deck management to kind of give it a flavor. So if you sacrifice a garlic uh, to upgrade stake follies, suddenly the stake follies have like a conical pushback. And you know, maybe the bolts also have a pushback or something like that. Uh, you could go like really deep with some level of like sacrifice this card to give this property. And I mean, it could be kind of basic, like fire cards will do a very specific thing. Or, uh, you know, state cards will add range. Or, yeah, I mean, actually, that would, that would be exactly it. You know, adding a stake launcher. Uh, any of the, like, stake-based weapons to another weapon would specifically make it so it, like, has a longer range. So these would be further out. Or maybe, eh, not bigger. Throwing, putting a grenade on the meteors would probably work better. Uh, stakes bounce off walls, no. Additional stake. Like, the sad part is, I'm still being pushed back to a stake build that's fairly similar to my previous one, but not quite. I wanted to go for a throwable fire build, but... You know, having all of these cards in my deck, there's only so much I can do. Okay. Might as well just go for a couple of these. Yeah, bi bipod is just ridiculous. There's no way you can get around just having just like oodles of cards being chucked out at high speeds. I like the detonator. Like some of these, some of these are actually working out quite well for me. Knock him 
back. Toss a Molotov. I was really hoping I could expand the size of that. As another thing is, like, I'd love to have more abilities that specifically affect, like, how long these last or various effects like that. We'll just go for splinters on kill. It's just a handy source of bonus damage. Just chuck that there. We have plenty of enemies coming through anyway. Flamethrower going that direction. Meteors. Because, yeah, I, I wish I could actually increase my burn damage. So far, I don't seem to be able to do that. And so I can't actually rely on burn damage to do much more than just weaken my enemies a smidge. And maybe that's fine. Let's grab a memory chip. Those are just great. That's like the one item that, yeah, getting multiple of those does not hurt. Okay, that was a little bit less boom than I thought it was going to, but that's fine. I think the other thing I would say is, I don't actually like the fact that you're leveling up mid-combat. I think... I see I see the logic. I mean, it's very much what Vampire Survivors did. I'd rather you actually have, like... I, I would rather players are ranked based on a handful of criteria. Did you get hit? How fast did you kill the enemies? You know, instead of having it be a time... Well, no, I think it should be a time-based thing. How many enemies did you kill in the period of time? Um, and did you get hit at all in, like, maybe one or two other criteria? Because uh, I think it should be one of those where, at the end of every round, you get... Effectively a score, the better you did, the better the reward. And so it's, like, maybe rarer upgrades or, like, an upgrade bit onto one of these weapons like I'm I'm just kind of throwing ideas out here uh as well as one passive uh or two you know if you have like a totally perfect run against a boss or a mid boss or something like that uh giving players like two passives eh, no I think that would get a little busted or at least be kind of unfair the one issue is like you don't want to have the gungeon newbie tax oh I don't know if I'd call it a newbie tax but the like Hey, uh, you didn't do well enough. You don't you don't get the max health upgrade. That sucks. I always hated that in Gungeon. Uh, let's see. I think I've been using too much garlic here. The slows down time is interesting. Yeah, uh, one other thing to note is that I'm getting a lot of, like, doubles damage to frozen enemies. Lightning strikes have a chance to freeze. Like, I don't have either of these in my deck. And so I'm forced to pick something vaguely within my build. Oh. Well, we can now play as the Pyromancer. Golden Garlic. New Relic. Garlic costs zero energy. Yo. Time's died. Wait, what? But the boss... I'm confused. Okay. Well, at the very least, we have Pyromancer. Oh, Chronomancer. So these are different starting, uh, starting builds. I don't like the reduced. Ex Wait, no. Actually, I don't give a dang about the reduced experience. The Horde's lasting longer is a little spooky. I still don't know how to get this character. But yeah, let's let's go for the full Pyro build. I guess that's the real answer. Is just like. Yeah, I needed to have unlocked the Pyromancer build sooner. Uh, Cause yeah, now that, now we've got full fire build. Ooh, this is what I was looking for. I can now be a bowling ball. None of these are useful for me. Oh, that is in incredibly satisfying, which is part of the reason why I love the, oh, we might actually want to grab a stopwatch in retrospect. The sad part is I've already got a full build, like, Except for the, hey, this is free tokens, the memory cards. There's not really much of a reason for me to pick new things. I don't fire stakes, so there's no point in that. Let's give him a flamethrower. I think we'll grab a detonator. That seems very on point for this. Oh, we don't even have any garlic. 
But uh, what I was going to say for some of these relics, like uh, literally all of these, actually, none of these help me. I do not have poison. I do not have garlic. I do not fire steaks. I'm going to grab golden garlic because there's one thing I want to check with it. Um, but it does feel like considering how heavily build focused this is, being able to reroll or reject or replace or unlock relics, like maybe it's one of those where uh, you actually have a very small set of boring passive relics in the very beginning, but by, uh, by specifically, I'm going to grab the stopwatch. Okay, so that just slows enemies down. Ooh, so it slows enemies down, but my mana gain is still the same. So that's actually incredibly helpful. Uh, da, 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 what was I going to say? Oh, right, unlocking relics and stuff. Uh, that in Backpack Hero, having a massive pool wasn't really much of a problem. You had plenty of ways to just kind of ignore it. And there was just so many options that were great that worked together that it just didn't matter. I don't have any tossables. Firewalker is kind of good. I think I'm going to go for gunpowder in case I decide to go Molotov. Because I think I'd rather have Molotovs than flamethrowers. But it feels like you should have a pool of like starting common relics that aren't very good. And then a much bigger pool of vastly superior uh, vastly superior relics that can only be found if you've got the exact prerequisites to get them to show up. Uh, let's see. So, for example, if I have, like, three fire cards, we get the burning enemies have a chance... Or, not fire cards, cards that specifically apply burning. You get... You potentially get the, um... Let's see, this is actually a smidge dicey. I guess I can grab this and just knock him out of the way, or never mind, we're fine. Uh... But yeah, uh, fire cards that specifically leave fire on the ground, you get Firewalker. Garlic, you have to have at least two garlic. Duplicate or lose a relic. Oops. Oh well. It's not the end of the world. I don't have any throwables anyway. I do like the stopwatches though. Those those are actually amazing. Like a lot of these ideas are really good. I think the game just uh, needs more time in the oven to like really come into its own for how good this can potentially be without. I'm gonna say without too much issue. I, so much of it boils down to it just needs. Uh, some means of kind of controlling the pool a little bit, or act actually like letting you follow the build. Because I'd rather have a game that is hard that lets you follow an interesting build than a game that is easy that your build is just whatever whatever you can get. Um, and part of the problem is this level up system is kind of moot. I don't think I've picked a single level up option so far because there's no reason for me to use it? Hell, I've barely even used Firewalk or Flamethrower. Like, the Meteors are maybe just a little too good? Or, I think the real answer is just Flamethrower and Fire Dash are single use. They don't stick around. Uh, and so while they can have, like, a big impact, uh, the situation where I'm going to want to use them over, say, more Meteor is low. Uh, let's go for the energy capacity, because having five means I can potentially do a fire dash and meteors if I need to. I'm still hoping for some more bipods as well. But yeah, that flamethrower absolutely wrecked that guy, but then leaves some fire damage, which is, you know, actually good. But if I had upgrades that specifically made, like, fire, uh, fire on ground last longer... There we go. I think I would use it that much more. 
Or if I had more upgrades that were like, hey, uh... Use this and get out of the way. There we go. I actually really like that stopwatch. I will have to try the Chronomancer run, because yeah, who cares about experience? I, I don't pick cards. Like, you're inundated with options, but with no way of like managing your deck. You're just gonna kind of fill out. Hence why I'm thinking like a card combo system or like a card effect system. I was playing card in CL earlier. Uh, okay, we do want to grab the detonator as we do a lot of fire. Uh, but I was playing Card and CL earlier, and one of the things it did really well uh, is that you would find cards with effectively cheat codes attached to them that were permanent and would affect all cards of the same type in your deck. Uh, the I'll go for that one just in case we get the Holy Relic. We don't have Bipod, though, which makes this tougher. Okay, don't think I can do too much. I have no idea how much HP this robot has. Yeah, it doesn't say. I wonder if actually the robot, uh, when it takes hits, you lose time. That actually might be the case. Also for the uh, spinny meteors, I actually wish that they would, uh, their rotation placement was based uh, it was, like, predictable, as opposed to... Let's see. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about this. Uh, it was predictable rather than, like, when you cast it. Because it makes some really pretty patterns if you get, like, three, or three of them out simultaneously, but only if you get the timing right. And it would actually be kind of neat if, um... It would do that automatically, because I, I notice sometimes I overlap them, and that feels not bad, just eh. Let's get rid of one fire dash. I don't think I need more than more than one. It's the kind of thing, kind of like stopwatch, that I keep in my, my loadout for when I need it, as opposed to something I use regularly. If there was something I could do to modify my fire in some meaningful fashion, that would be big. But I haven't even found the, like, you know, things on fire have a chance to explode. Like, so far this run has been very committed to the idea of me going for a frost build. Um, which... How would I describe it? I guess, to borrow the euphemism, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But I don't have a juicer. I've got, like, an easy bake oven. And so I, I like, have a shit ton of lemons. And, you know, no matter how much anybody says, like, make lemonade with that... I have an Easy Bake Oven. How the hell do you make lemonade with an Easy Bake Oven? Look, if you can make lemonade with an Easy Bake Oven, you deserve my respect, and I want to know how you... How? See? There's Holy Light, so Freezing Lightning is practical, sort of. Not really. <laughs> um, yeah, the main thing here is just meteors are just very strong. They last for a while, they kick enemies back, they set enemies on fire. Genuinely one of the better items in the game. Uh, da, 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 da. But yeah, so like, right now I've been given a bunch of ice abilities or like maybe poison abilities or something like that. I have no means of doing anything with those. They're they're purely like auxiliary to my build. Auxiliary? They're, they're not even connected. They're just there. They're there because I don't have a choice. And so, once again, like, if you only unlocked those, if you fulfilled the requirements to, to fit them in. Like, for example, this only shows up if you have lightning, so you'd have to get this one first. This could be a basic relic, but it unlocks this relic plus, like, another relic that makes it so fire damage. Um, or lightning sets enemies on fire, too. Like, you could actually have kind of a couple of these, and it all branches out in interesting fashions, so that you have this, like, wide variety of options to play with. Frozen enemies may explode into icy shards. 
I'm gonna grab it because we have freezing lightning, but I don't need it. I don't want it, but we have no choice. Uh, but having having more of kind of that like builds crafting vibe would work. I think the one problem is that runs a little counter to. Do we gotta grab a lightning rod? Sure. Considering I have a bunch of lightning upgrades, why not? I really want to go for a deployable build at some point. Like, just lightning rods and gun turrets. But because cards are so expensive to play, it's a little tough. Don't want to fit that in. And, like, it's fine. It's really good, actually. I, I actually really like that. I'll have to try more of it. Lightning strikes have a further chance to freeze. I have not seen a single burning enemies have a chance to explode upright this entire time. That is wild to me. Even with this garlic upgrade that I can't do anything with. Just explode those guys just for some early damage. I was also kind of hoping for a bipod, because you can do a lot with bipod. Admittedly, I can do a lot right now just because one meteor is enough to kind of keep enemies off of me and kill a decent number of them. Kind of. We're getting to the point where I'm starting to be overwhelmed. Which means I should actually probably use the stopwatch. It's a great way of getting a lot of... I, You know what, actually, I think it only pays for itself. Is the downer. I'm gonna have to pop another one of these. The lightning turret is nice. But that's a lot of enemies coming to, coming in for a hug. Which is part of the reason why I've just been using this one spell a whole bunch. Okay, let's pop that. Because it pays for itself on a functional level. Yeah, see, this is the pattern I was talking about earlier. I wish playing multiple of these meteors would automatically create this pattern. Okay, well, whenever you use a card, lightning strikes another enemy. And like, that is a build. Uh, I think I might actually do one more run of this. I wanna go back and see if I can get the golden garlic comboed with holy light. What if I just had a shit ton of garlics that I was just endlessly garlic cycling to lightning the hell out of everything? Like, that would be a very fun build. I'm glad I haven't seen Golden Garlic show up again, so it might be that some of these relics uh, are single use. I sincerely hope that's the case. It's such a shame when games are like, here's a thing that only functions once. There it is. But for entirely arbitrary reasons, uh, now you can get multiple of them. But why, you ask? I don't know. Design oversight, and they just never fix it. It's rare, but it happens. Yeah, the problem with the detonator is just that I actually have to have my enemies live long enough for me to detonate them. How am I doing time-wise? Abysmally, actually. Okay, do I want to do a flamethrower into that crowd? I think I do. That's some big damage there. And I think I'm going to do another meteor. I do like this run. Like, it's it's very tense. But I argue some of that is entirely due to the RNG just being extremely mean to me right now. Because, yeah, being able to pivot into kind of some weird frost lightning build would make a lot of sense and be really cool. The problem is I need sufficient uh, frost and lightning cards and card removal to actually make that happen. And also I'm a little... I'm a little sad there's no lightning sets things on fire upgrade. I feel like there should be one. Uh, 
Okay. God, I'm trapped. Just gonna scoot back and forth in here. And meteor meteors are the only reason why I've lived through this run. I mean, that's effective. I was hoping I'd get more of those memory chips and get those to really, like, carry me here. I can do nothing about that bat, but it's fine, we're done. Ooh, okay. Well, at least I'm getting a whole bunch of lightning strikes. Hack the terminals. Time's died. That's confusing. Yeah, so it looks like... It looks like maybe the boss isn't enabled. Uh, well, do we go die? I think, I think let's just start a run and immediately die. Because I might as well unlock whatever that is. And then we'll try that garlic build, because I want to see it. But yeah, overall, I like, I like what this is showcasing so far. It's got a lot of neat ideas. It just needs some time in the oven. New run, easy mode. We don't need it. I don't know if there's other unlocks. Unfortunately, this is probably going to break the game. Yeah, it's going to break the game again. I mean, I guess I can play it in a tiny window, but eh, it probably makes the resolution look bad. I'll just swap this back again. Uh, but yeah, I like the idea is trying to cross deck builder gameplay with some of the creative, with some a decent amount of the backpack hero, uh, like builds crafting elements. And then also bullet heaven mechanics, also time only moving when you move. Like all of those actually seem really cool. And I like the idea of them. I think the execution is mostly there, just needs, yeah, more time, memory chip. I really wanna do a run where I just have like oodles of memory chips and just free stuff. And then the lightning, where I'm just like spamming cheap cheap or free cards that lets me do untold horror to my enemies. I could also go for the poison build, but let's go for holy light. Oh, removal or trade? I should pay attention to some of these. I don't know what trade would be. Presumably replace one card with another, maybe. Garlic grenade. I don't know if Garlic Grenade really counts. Okay, let's just avoid taking too much damage. Explosive rounds, more Holy Light. Yeah, do we try the tra trade? Sure. Trade card for the one shown. Absolutely. Goodbye, steak launcher. Hello, more lightning. Okay, so the strike, uh, the trade is pretty good. I, I wish we had more of those. Being able to trade cards just seems really handy. I'm going to keep going for the memory chips because memory chip lets me just spam shot a bunch of junk out. Grab that. All right, we're starting to find a build. Golden garlic, garlic now costs zero energy. Hell yeah. I'm glad that the mystery spots actually are proper mystery spots. Or not, there aren't proper mystery spots that they actually do have. Um, let's see. Let's just push them away. Uh, the, the mystery spots are actually labeled, they just don't have icons for them yet. Not exactly what I meant to grab, but that's fine. Grab that, more stake launchers. 
Wait, are the mem are memory chips single use? I don't I don't think so. They are single use. That actually is kind of sad. Doubles damage to frozen enemies. Let's just do splinters. But yeah, I wish there were more mystery spots just because, once again, the joy in these games is like extensive builds crafting and customization. And it is a bit of a shame to only have a limited amount of that. Get a steak launcher. We don't actually want any more. We don't need the garlic. What am I doing? Send that off. Do steaks have a limited range? They do. So actually the bounce, bouncing stakes would be kind of great. Just maybe not right now. I mean, we certainly don't need it right now. <laughs> Haven't I gotten that option like three times now? I mean, I'm totally fine with the idea of lightning and three things every time I cast a card. It works really great with the garlic, which I should be using avidly here. Because even if nothing else... Do that, get another lightning rod. Even if nothing else, that's like an extra 30 damage. And I think the lightning does strike in an AoE. It just only strikes... Uh, they have to be like right next to each other. Oops. It's fine. Frozen enemies may explode. Do I want to grab this? Energy sink is good. But no, let's go for the Shatter Glyph just in case we get the frozen lightning upgrade. I guess I'm just going to stand still for a bit. It's actually, like, despite the lack of bipods, this is a very strong run. Between all the lightning that I toss out. Okay, lightning strikes have a chance to freeze there. Now we've got the lightning freeze combo. So we have healing, duplication, or removal. We're just gonna go back and remove. Uh, we wanna get rid of another stake volley. We just do not want them. They just do not jive. Cause yeah, I want just a reasonable amount of cheap things. I could go for the lightning rod, but we already have one in the deck. It would just mean I could use it more. The memory chips are an easy pick because they remove themselves. And even if they didn't, they're amazing. It's a at least one cost discount on anything. And it triggers my lightning multiple times. The main thing is we also want to have a really thin deck so I can cycle those garlics. Considering free garlic, many lightning is pretty good. Okay, lightning chance uh, strikes have an even higher chance of freezing. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's do that. None of these. It doesn't really matter to me which direction we go. Okay. Might as well do a memory chip. Just get rid of those. Because we might as well get all the memory chips 
out of kind of my lineup. Because we're just we're just kind of chucking everything in the wall at the moment. It. Uh, let's see. All tossables have increased area. I don't think that helps much. Stake weapons fire an additional stake. Like, rubber bullets or trigger finger are both good. Let's go for trigger finger. I like the idea of my stakes bouncing off of walls. But this is also not that kind of build. I was actually really hoping I could get more shatter glyphs. There we go. We also don't have a single bipod, but we're actually doing fine. Other thing I'd love to see for this, since uh, so many unlocks are tied to, like, a certain completionism, I don't know if we have more unlocks that I haven't found in the game yet, but if there are any, I would love to see uh, some kind of compendium of, like, hey, here's all the, here's all the upgrades that you can possibly get. I should probably try and prioritize the lightning. Just because extra lightning is way more powerful than just some amount of stakes. Especially because we can just garlic cycle into more lightning launchers. It's a goofy build. Double damage to frozen enemies. All right. Pull my arm while you don't you. Okay, grab a couple of those. Yeah, so... Cripes, this is actually really effective. Like, we're not even running a freeze build intentionally, it just happened to be this way. We want more lightning. Because the lightning freezes, and the lightning damages, and the lightning does double damages. We do not care. The gone Cretans. Use another one of those. Yeah, if I could have actually removed one of the stake launchers as well, that would have been lovely. But it's fine. I'm actually really impressed. Like, I've had I've had a lot of fun with this. It's rough. It's raw. It needs some work. But uh, this, I think it's the first bullet heaven I've been excited for in a long time. Uh, we've got some other ones on the horizon that I'm also kind of excited for. But this actually has some really, idea, uh, really fun ideas that I want to play around with. It just needs time to capitalize on those. Uh, double damage to frozen enemy. Wait, does that just quadruple damage or does that triple damage? Or does it not trigger at all? Also, it doesn't matter. We can't fight the boss. Well, it's fine. I think I'm going to leave it here. I actually really like this. It needs work. It needs some time. It needs more build crafting, more deck management. I don't like how fast you level in the game because it's functionally pointless. If there's no way to get rid of those cards or fuse them down or use them in some kind of consumable fashion. All of those level ups are just going to get ignored, and what that does is it slows down the game. Just periodically, it's like, hey, do you want this thing you don't want? No. It's like um, getting spam advertisements in your mailbox. You just immediately throw them in the recycling, but it's kind of insulting that you have to be the one to do so. You know, I don't need to change my internet provider, internet provider that I'm already using. Like, I get ads for my ISP, to asking me to switch to them, which is insane. I realize that's that's kind of random seeming, but like it very much is that that like so many of these are are cards and items and and things that I, I functionally have no use for. And like vampire survivors and every other bullet heaven gets around it because you keep them, uh, but they're not like filling out a deck. There's no bloat or anything like that. And so in this one. You get so many cards that it feels kind of pointless because you don't want more of those. You know, I wanted to be able to cycle a handful of cards, but I was never given more garlics. 
And due to hand size limitations, even if I got more garlics, it wouldn't do anything for me. Uh, if I could get rid of every single one of those steak launchers and the steak volley, or if I just didn't start with them to begin with, it wouldn't be so bad. But because I functionally lost four of my ha four out of five hand slots to, to cards that I could not and did not want to use generally, it made it difficult for me to want to grab even more cards because what? Am I going to add like a Molotov cocktail, a fifth card that I don't really want to my very limited hands? No, of course not. You know, I'm not going to play around with that stuff, especially because, you know, none of these relics help. However, if it was like, hey, lightning sets enemies on fire, but to unlock that one, you need a card that sets enemies on fire just to be able to unlock that relic in the first place. Then that Molotov cocktail becomes kind of worthwhile, especially if there's like a, a counter upgrade that makes it so any enemy standing on fire has a chance to get hit by lightning. Uh, one thing I noticed is that this has a bunch of... Uh, Relics that are meant to be repeatable. I like that. I actually think that's very good, and I think that's a lot of fun. The only thing I would say is criticism of that is that I wish there were more ele elements, like mid-bosses, that would give you rare single-use relics that were much more powerful that fit specific builds, like the Firestorm relic that I just described. You know, if that only shows up if you beat, like, one of the mid-bosses midway through an act, or for beating the boss itself, uh, that, like, crazy combo relic if you can get it, is game-changing, because then your entire goal should be, you know, extra fire duration, extra fire spread, and, you know, just more lightning-related abilities, and then your entire goal is to make, you know, the game look like you're playing Divinity Original Sin as opposed to, uh, well, this game. Because you want the en entire environment to be on fire. It helps you if everything's on fire. Uh, and having the ability to get to that point with all of the repeated relics would be lovely. I think part of that is also being able to cull relics from the pool. I think one of the easiest options is to just give players a banish. Like, every single time they level up, they can banish exactly one thing. Just so they can be like, no, I don't want that. I don't want any frost. Uh, and there's other means of doing that. And, like, realistically, yes, if you get rid of too much randomization... Uh, players are just going to be, be able to make exactly the build they want every single time. And that is a problem. Uh, because then you do like the five five to ten runs with the builds that you want then never ever again. Uh, but it feels like there needs to be kind of a healthy middle ground be between, you know, being able to create exactly the build you want whenever you want. And then, hey, here's a bunch of garbage that you absolutely do not want. Good luck. Because then you more or less just force players to stick with their absolute basic setup and never pivot because, you know, nothing's more frustrating than having two half-baked builds that don't work together at all. Uh, and so it needs to be either ways of modifying the pools to kind of, like, fit that, or to make those two half-baked builds turn into, like, a really delicious gestalt that you can play around with. Uh, I think this has the potential to get there. I mean, especially after Backpack Hero, I know it does. Uh, it just needs some more time. But for now, at least, I might as well mention once again, the Moonwatch was just announced on on Steam. On Steam. Uh, so if you do want to uh, follow its development, head on down to the description below and click that link. I'll take you to the Steam page and you can add it to your wish list. And it'll, you'll be notified as soon as the game is out. Uh, I'm sure this is going to go through a demo phase. I'm sure this is going to go through uh, some level of like pre-access or pre-release access, just because that's how it worked with Backpack Hero, and it worked really, really well. And so I'd imagine that we don't have to wait too long before this game becomes available for people to play in some some capacity. Uh, I do also hope you get some extra acts, just because, you know, one act is not nearly enough to really make a build sing. But for now at least, if you like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, it helps more than you know, and if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe, because I got tons to check out and show off. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.